Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here in Dauphin today. My name is Ron Kostichin. I am the Minister of Agriculture and the MLA for Dauphin. Dauphin is on Treaty 2 territory and traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Assiniboine, Dakota, Denny people, and the homeland of the Manitoba Metis Federation. I am joined today with Premier Wab Canoe and the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, Lisa Naylor. I'm also joined uh, by a number of people uh, that have relatives that were involved in the accident, and I welcome them as well. As we all know, on June 15, 2023, a tragic collision occurred at the intersection of Highway 1 and 5, which has affected so many of us in this province. Following the incident, Manitoba Transfer Transportation and Infrastructure undertook a road safety review of the intersection, and today we are releasing it to the public. We are committed to making future actions to ensure Manitoba roads are safer for everyone as road safety is a top priority of our government. To speak more on this, I will turn it over to Premier Canoe and then Minister Naylor following their remarks and we will take questions if you may have. So now I invite our Premier, Ms. Wab Canoe, to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, folks. Thank you for joining us today. This is a difficult uh, topic for all of us, but more so for the family members of those we lost in this terrible tragedy, and of course for the survivors and for the first responders who were there on the scene uh, delivering uh, care and doing their best to respond to a very difficult moment in our province's history. Our team is here today uh, to respond in two ways. One, to indicate to the people of Manitoba that we are going to do the safest thing when it comes to the future of this intersection. And two, to tell the families, the survivors, the people of Dauphin and Carberry that as you move forward to memorialize and commemorate the people that we lost and to remember this terrible tragedy, we will be there to support you. And we will help find the resources and we will deliver the funding to ensure that an appropriate memorial here in Dauphin, as well as a fitting uh, tribute at the site uh, near Carberry, will be a part of Manitoba's future. Earlier today, Ministers Costition, uh, Naylor, and uh, myself, along with our political and technical staff, had the honor to sit down with the family members of folks that we lost in this province uh, in this terrible, tragic accident. We were also joined by folks who survived and who had family members survive this uh, tragic incident. Of course, we also were honored to be joined by first responders and local leaders in both Dauphin and Carberry. And so I want to acknowledge all of these people, first and foremost, uh, in the generosity of their spirit to come and sit with us today and to relive uh, some very difficult times that they've been through. And I want to thank the first responders who had to do their important work in a situation that uh, many of us can only imagine. And I know that that's something that they will continue to carry with them. And we've got your backs as you work through that. To the family members and uh, to the survivors, I want to acknowledge that we cannot make things right or make you whole. But we are going to work our hardest to ensure that something like this does not happen again. And we are also going to work hard to ensure that we can be there to help you on your healing journey. And so our team is here today to share information that has been uh, the result of work underway since the immediate aftermath of this terrible tragedy. And this process has delivered three options for this intersection at Highways 1 and 5 for the future. 
it is our commitment that we are going to make the safest possible uh, scenario for this intersection going forward. We've leaned on the expertise of engineers, uh, folks in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, and have really uh, used data and evidence to guide the narrowing down of all the options that were on the table down to these three scenarios. And now we're asking for your help, help from people in Carberry, in Dauphin, and across Manitoba. We want to make our Manitoba highway network safer. And so we're asking for your input and your advice as we try to choose between these three different scenarios and visions for the future of this intersection. And at the end of that process, we intend to make sure that we are constructing the safest possible future vision for that intersection. So this is a very difficult moment that occurred in our province last year, and today is also a difficult time for many people. And it's our commitment, again, that we are going to take the steps necessary to try and ensure that things like this don't happen in the future, that the entirety of our highway network in Manitoba is made safer, and that we remember and acknowledge those folks that we lost and those folks who were part of the accident who were honored to be able to shake hands with today. So we have a lot more detail and a lot more uh, technical uh, information that we can dive into, but I wanted to begin with these opening comments, comments of thanks uh, for the local leaders who have been stepping up time and time again, thanks of gratitude for the first responders who were there first on the scene and who continued to carry this incident with them, and of course, with the greatest humility, our thoughts, prayers, and importantly, action that we are committed to for those that we've lost and for the survivors. So at this time, I'll invite Minister Lisa Naylor, who is Manitoba's Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, to share some comments. Thank you, Premier. So my name is Lisa Naylor. I'm the Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure, as well as Consumer Protection and Government Services. I want to begin by echoing the Premier's comments and thanking the families and community members who took the time to meet with us earlier today and to acknowledge those joining us online who could not be here in person. Over the past six months, an independent panel of engineers has studied potential improvements to this intersection, and they recently provided their, excuse me, <clears throat> provided their final report to our government. Today, we're releasing the report as well as an executive summary in full to the public. Improvements in this intersection will take place in several stages. Immediate upgrades have already been completed, including installation of new important intersection signs and additional speed limit signs, refreshed pavement markings, and rumble strips on Highway 5. Some of the recommendations made in the report can be done quite simply, and some have already been completed, like the ones I mentioned. Making the upcoming intersection more obvious to drivers through specialized signage, lighting, or more extensive pavement paint are other examples. The report also outlines three medium-term options. And by medium-term, I'm talking about a solution that would be appropriate for this intersection from 20 to 25 years from now for major safety improvements. And these three options are considered the safest options. These recommendations will form the basis of the upcoming feasibility study. The first option could be a roundabout. This option does need careful consideration and further study due to the location of the intersection. Although the study states that in lower speed areas they are very safe, roundabouts may not be the most feasible option on the TransCanada. In high speed, rural, isolated intersections such as PTH 1 and 5, vehicle approach speeds would have to be reduced, potentially creating other risks. The next option is media widening. The median is currently quite narrow for large buses and trucks, which were much shorter when these highways were originally built. And therefore, a wider median provides drivers with the space to stop and to be able to take care when crossing the highway. And the third option is called an R-cut. So that's R-cut, a restricted crossing U-turn. 
Our cuts are a new feature to Manitoba, but they're used in many other jurisdictions, particularly in the U.S., and they've been shown to reduce potential conflict points and provide drivers with su sufficient space and time to do safe movement across and through intersections. Saskatchewan has just installed an R-cut near Saskatoon, so we are starting to see these um, come into communities such as this. As the Premier has indicated, our government is committed to determining which of these options will best increase safety for Manitobans at the Highway 1 and 5 intersection. And we will continue to work closely with experts in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure to make this decision. We'll also be looking for feedback from Manitobans as part of the next stage of planning, which is the functional design process. This project will be tendered very soon, and a normal part of that process is community town halls and other consultative opportunities. I'm very happy to announce today that our government will be investing $12 million into the improvements at Highway 1 and 5. This number is based on current estimated costs which have been determined by departmental experts. Extending enhancing the safety of highways extends beyond Highway 1 and 5. Manitobans use our highways every single day, and as the government, it is our responsibility to make sure they are as safe as possible. We are taking the lessons learned from this report and applying them to other locations across the province. In reviewing this intersection, the department has, become, has begun embedding a safe systems approach to highway renewal and planning, and that will certainly be our way forward in this province. This approach aims to create a more forgiving road system, meaning that the system accepts that people make mistakes and are vulnerable, so road systems are created to prevent tragedies. The first step is to create a road safety response team, a permanent safety unit within the Department of Transportation Infrastructure, which will be tasked with reviewing Manitoba's highway network and identifying potential safety improvements across the province. The safety unit will be made up of many of the same experts in the department who worked on the safety strategy for the Highway 1 and 5 intersection. I want to close by taking a moment to thank all of those hardworking public servants and also the external engineers who wrote the report for us for all the work that they've done and will continue to do to ensure our highways are safe and accessible for all Manitobans. We do have some of our department engineers and leadership here today for any technical questions that may come. And now the Premier and I are happy to take any questions that you may have. Okay, I'll take that question. Um, the RFP is going out in the next few weeks, which means that the functional design process will begin soon after that. That process, um, the functional design piece would be expected to take about six to nine months. That does include uh, at least three um, consultation steps with the community, as well as other users of the highway, such as Manitoba Trucking Association. From there, once the community has had the opportunity to give feedback on the different design processes and options, um, then, there, then it goes to the more um, detailed design process. So we would be looking at starting the actual building of whatever changes happen that intersection, intersection starting probably around the end of 2025 and with completion in 2026. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat the question because uh, we have folks monitoring on Zoom and they can't hear the uh, room sound. So the question was about an interchange and uh, whether we'll consider it. So the, the quick answer is yes, we are considering it. There will be an interchange at this location in the future. The engineers tell us that that's probably in the 20 to 25 year timeline in terms of when that makes sense. We can provide some background in terms of the thought process that uh, gets us here. First and foremost, we're going to do the safest thing for this intersection going forward into the future. And for the reporters in the room, I'll draw your attention to the executive summary of the report. This is about 170 page document that we shared today. The engineers were on site at the accident. 
they monitored the speed of drivers on the Trans-Canada on Highway 5. They monitored how many people stop, how many people roll through the intersection, how many people run the stop sign. They took a look at all the different history that we have on record for this and they conducted a very sophisticated modeling for this scenario. If you look at what the safest option is according to the engineer modeling in that document, the roundabout is actually safer than the interchange model. The R-cut model is comparable to both the interchange and the roundabout in terms of level of safety. But the question for you, the average person uh, following along on this issue is, is putting a roundabout on the Trans-Canada the safest thing that we could do going forward here? Is bringing in a new traffic feature like an R-cut or an interchange the safest thing that we can do here? And that's why we need this public consultation because us as the government shouldn't be making this decision behind closed doors without hearing from you. And so that's why we want to hear from the ag industry, the trucking industry, folks in Carberry, people affected here in Dauphin, highway users from across the province to tell us uh, what you think the best option is here going forward. So we're listening to the advice of experts and as a result of that we've narrowed this down to the three proposals that Minister Naylor has outlined here. Roundabout, median widening and uh, the R-cut model. And these are the safest options before us given the current traffic volume on the site. And now we want your input in determining which of these is the best fit for our highways here in Manitoba going forward. What? Alors, la question était en français, comment est-ce que nous avons choisi uh, ces, ces trois options? Bien, il y a beaucoup d'experts uh, que nous avons embauchés et qui travaillent dans le département. Et puis, ils ont étudié uh, ce uh, chemin, ces chemins. Puis aussi, ils ont uh, regardé uh, différentes uh, modes qu'on voit dans les autres uh, pays, dans les autres provinces. Et puis, pour cet endroit, nous avons vu que ces trois options sont les trois options les le, 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 le plus meilleures pour améliorer la situation ici. Mais maintenant, nous devrons parler avec vous, euh, le peuple de cette province, pour sélectionner c'est quoi le meilleur entre ces, ces trois options. Parce que oui, Ça se peut qu'une des approches sont vraiment euh, une bonne idée pour les experts, mais est-ce que dans le vrai monde, où tout le monde habite ici, est-ce que ça va fonctionner comme ça dans, 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 les, dans nos hivers ou dans l'été ou dans la saison où on voit beaucoup de, 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 de camions dans les, les, les secteurs agricoles? Alors, nous, nous avons créé ce travail jusqu'à maintenant, et maintenant, nous demandons à vous, euh, le, le public, de nous aider pour les prochaines étapes. Et à quel point ces consultations-là vont vous aider dans la décision finale et les consultations Six à 9 mois. À quel point ça va influencer la décision finale Bien, nous avons. Nous, nous parlerons avec le public. Tout, uh, partout dans ce uh, processus de six à neuf mois. So I want to make clear that our government is not going to lead this. We want out of respect and out of reverence for the folks who have been the most impacted by this tragedy. We want them to take the lead on it. Um, and so I'll leave it to those groups to share publicly the information when they're prepared to do so. But I can tell you that folks in Dauphin are in the process of developing uh, a very moving memorial for the folks that we lost and to honour the survivors as well. And so our commitment as a government is that we're going to make sure that that thing can be built. And we're going to make sure that we show up in an appropriate way to help people work through the healing process. and. Um, observe and commemorate along the way. So yes, we will be there. Yeah. Also, 
if you lost a loved one or if you yourself went through this terrible tragedy, I think our government owes it to you to tell you first about what the next steps are going to be. Many of us uh, can only imagine what took place on that day, and it's a priority for us to be here and often to share this message with some of the most impacted people first. And um, I think that we all know that as we do the public consultation process, we'll be in Carberry many times for that. We'll be in uh, the RM. We'll be carrying out a public consultation process that includes all Manitobans. But it seems appropriate and fitting that at the start, we're here in Dauphin. In the, uh, the community and the hub for a region, uh, the parkland, that was so tragically impacted on that day last year. And um, I would just want to acknowledge that the families and uh, survivors and local leaders and first responders have been very generous with us. And so we want to honor their willingness to participate in this process. And any of uh, you know, the mistakes or shortcomings along the way are, are on us. They have been exemplary in their conduct. I won't go, I wouldn't presume to speak on behalf of them in any way. Uh, I would simply say that it was meaningful for us to have the time to engage with the families and I thank them for their seriousness and the reverence that they um, are showing not only for their loved ones but also this process of making highways safer across Manitoba. When we zoom out from the specific consultation and whatever intersection configuration we ultimately build with this investment uh, that's being announced today. I also want to make clear that we're talking about decisions that are going to influence highway safety across the province as well. For whatever reason, data wasn't always collected across the highways in the province until this tragedy took place. That data is now being collected and we're identifying other intersections, other stretches of highway where there are challenges around safety. And so we are saying to the people of Manitoba, to the people of Carberry and Dauphin specifically, help us choose the safest configuration for this intersection going forward. But in that process, we're also saying that these consultations and decisions are going to inform the highway safety decisions that we make going forward here in Manitoba. This was a terrible tragedy. We don't want something like this to happen again. And one of the ways uh, that I think we honor what took place is by trying to ensure that more people in Manitoba who head out onto the road in the future are able to come home safe at the end of their journeys. No, that's part of the functional design process is so going out, consulting with the community on these three options. So the functional design includes kind of an early design without a lot of detail about what any of the three options could look like. And that's, you know, will be shared with community, consultate, there'll be the opportunity to learn about, especially something like the art cut that's unfamiliar to folks, to learn about what that means and, and get that feedback. But then the more detailed design process begins once a particular design is decided on and then the detail happens um, that's when our engineer that's a that's a bit of a longer process for the engineers to get that detailed design sometimes there's um, we need to you know we may need to acquire land around the intersection like there's a bunch of pieces that have to happen administratively to make that happen but we're very hopeful that we would be able to be building towards the end of 2025. That would happen during the functional design process. So six to nine months is the usual uh, the usual timeline for that type of, we're, we're not doing anything different than the usual timeline for a significant highway change. Uh, you said there were other uh, intersections that were being looked at that have been identified. Are there any in particular that have already been identified that really need to be addressed in 
No, this process that, that I talked about um, is going to start to analyze the data from across the province. As the Premier said, while well, MPI and policing services do collect that data, it's different to have our engineers in the road safety department analyzing that data and looking at, you know, to help us inform us around priorities for future interchange, or sorry, for future um, intersection changes. You'll have to say, we can go to Zoom questions. Oh, sorry, I misheard. We can go to Zoom questions now. Thank you, Minister. Just a reminder to reporters on the call, you'll have one question and one follow-up. Today, we've got Sam from CBOB. Go ahead. Hi, um, Minister. I think a lot of people may be wondering why uh, traffic signals isn't one of the options that would be considered in the medium term here. Would you be able to just speak on that emission? Absolutely. Um, certainly the engineers would have looked at that as an option. Uh, traffic signals, despite sort of popular ideas about that, aren't always safer and they're not always safer on a highway where the speed limit is 110 kilometers an hour. So just as a, as a kind of quick example about that, um, where I was talking about we, we need to look at safety through the lens of how people actually behave, not just what the rules are on the road. So, so you know, somebody may decide to slow down or stop at a yellow light and a semi coming behind them at 110 kilometers an hour may not have that time to stop, right, resulting in a, in a collision of some kind. So between the the data that was looked at and the different modeling that was done, um, traffic lights were not found to be the safest option for this intersection. Thank you, no further questions. Thank you, Sam. Next up, we have Brittany from CP. Go ahead. Hi there. Um, you know, Premier, you said that you wouldn't speak on behalf of families, but I know this is fairly early and then getting the results of the um, review, but I'm wondering if any family members or those impacted made any suggestions on what they would like to see at this intersection. Yes, I can take it. Uh, we heard from families today, you know, mostly families wanted to hear what we were bringing forward to them. They've all been invited to participate in the community consultation process, looking at the options. Yeah. And, and we were, you know, just interested in spending time with them and making sure they were the first to hear the report, to answer any of their technical questions, and that's what we did today. Thank you. And then, uh, you know, it says here in the release, and you mentioned that you'll be providing support for um, commemorative efforts. I'm wondering if there's a financial number attached to that or, or what support beyond financial support looks like. There's not a number attached to that. We've invited the people that are organizing the memorial um, to come to us with their asks once they have, um, have a design idea and know what they need going forward and we will support them to make that happen. Thank you, Brittany. Now we have Lola Brite. Hopefully, go ahead. Excellent, thank you. My question is for the Premier Minister Wapkinou. I would like to know Vous allez compter aller chercher l'appui financier de la part du fédéral ou de la municipalité? Euh, la question n'a pas bien fonctionné dans la salle ici. Est-ce que tu oh. pourrais le répéter? Oui. Est-ce que pour les modifications que vous prévoyez, vous comptez aller chercher de l'appui financier auprès du gouvernement fédéral ou du gouvernement municipal? Non. Ça, c'est un investissement du, du province entièrement. Très bien. Merci beaucoup. Merci à toi. Sorry, the question was whether we're seeking federal or municipal funding, and the answer is no. We are going to uh, pay for this uh, intersection improvement provincially. Thank you, Premier. And last questions today go to Globe and Mail. Timur, go ahead. Hello. Thank you so much, Premier and Minister, for taking our questions today. Um, my first question is for Premier Canu. Today's 179-page report did not examine the details surrounding last year's crash because it is currently under investigation from the RCMP. But how authoritative or conclusive exactly are the findings of the report when this report is unable to factor in the very crash that initiated its creation? The folks who put together the report released today 
uh, narrowed down all of the options on the table to three that we're taking forward to you, the people of Manitoba, so that you can help us choose the best option here. The folks looking at this uh, process did review what happened last June at this intersection. And as you work your way through the report, you will see that they've identified the highest risk behaviors that take place at the intersections of highways one and five. Specifically, it's crossing the Trans-Canada, which is what took place on that terrible day in June. And then it's also left turns uh, onto the Trans-Canada. And so now we have three options before us that would reduce or in other ways impact those three high risk scenarios. And we're asking for you, the public, to help us choose which is the safest of these options. Because again, when an engineer or an engineering firm is doing their modeling, they tell us that a roundabout is the safest scenario. But here in the real world, where the rest of us live, is a roundabout on the Trans-Canada actually going to be the safest option going forward? This R-cut model also scores highly, and it really, really uh, addresses some of the concerns, not the, just from the terrible tragedy last June, but from a previous fatality which occurred at this intersection, because it eliminates people crossing directly through the Trans-Canada uh, from Highway 5. But again, I would expect that folks who live in Carberry or in the region would want to have their say before we change their route to go to Brandon, as one example. So we're listening to the experts, the authorities, when it comes to traffic safety, and now we're asking for your help to ensure that the decision that we make here at this intersection is going to be the one that ensures that the most Manitobans uh, can come home safely uh, at the end of their trips on our provincial highways. Thank you, Mr. Canoe. Um, you also said today your government wants to ensure something like this ha never happens again. And you said you want to look beyond the intersection where this crash happened. If one of the three options presented today for this intersection goes ahead as planned, it would be great for that one part of these roads. But could you elaborate a bit more on other such problematic intersections on these busy highways your government is looking toward improving? Um, perhaps you or the minister could talk a little bit about what you guys are looking at there. Well, the minister and her department have put together a strong working group and uh, have started to collect the data in a very comprehensive fashion to guide our decisions about our provincial highways so that they can be safer going forward into the future. And as we engage the public, people in Carberry, in Dauphin, across Manitoba, with the decision about how do we make this intersection as safe as possible, that will be a template or a decision that informs the way we proceed with other intersections uh, that we look at in the future here in Manitoba. Thank you, Premier. That's everything from Zoom. We'll go back to the room. Maybe I'll invite the minister to, to comment because they've been engaged more directly. Yeah, thank you. Um, the RCMP has been in frequent contact with our department through the deputy minister. And so certainly they've had input. And, and it's actually the RCMP and MPI that c collect the data on um, crashes and fatalities. And so that, um, that communication will continue to... Um, to happen between the between them and our department, um, and you know, if they had specific uh, information to feed into this report, then um, that would have been a part of the external report that was done. Uh, you know, all parties that needed to be interviewed would have been done so as part of this report. Any further questions? All right, thanks, folks. Thank you for your time.